I think different people react differently to the sky. Some people really love to just sit under the stars and look at the stars. Um, I'm like that. I'm not really an amateur astronomer. I don't own a telescope, but I love to just be outside at nighttime looking at the sky and looking at the stars. Christopher Kyber is a Canadian-born physicist working in Germany who studies the impact of light pollution. Many researchers consider it the fastest growing and most widespread type of environmental pollution. It's disruptive for an estimated half of all life on Earth that becomes active when the sun goes down. Night tells them when to eat, sleep, migrate and reproduce. For human beings, disruptions to our inner clocks have been linked to insomnia, depression, cardiovascular disease and cancer. Kyber is an advocate of citizen science and helped develop a smartphone app that lets people from all over the world take part in his research. Called Loss of the Night, the app measures nighttime light levels and sends users' data to Kyber. We met Kyber in Potsdam, where he continues his studies at the German Research Center for Geoscience, or Gay FZ. For many people, so for about 80% of the population, we need alarm clocks to wake up. And that's not because we're lazy or something, it's because we have lights on at nighttime that promote our body to stay awake at nighttime. And then we go to bed sort of too late in some sense and for what our social obligations are and we need this alarm clock to wake up. If you take people and put them in a situation with no artificial light, for example camping, everybody sort of shifts to become a morning person. So you have a lot of bright light in the daytime and darkness at nighttime and your body simply reacts in that uh, because of that light and you wake up a lot earlier. So because of the artificial light that we have in our homes, um, many of us become much later chronotypes and uh, that's actually pretty bad for our health. Different people have different definitions of light pollution. Uh, for me it is uh, light that goes into the environment that has an effect on uh, animals. Um, for the animals it's a little bit less subjective. Basically, it, it just changes things a lot. So you have some, some animals that can benefit from the light and some that can't, but it is a big change. And uh, for most of the organisms that live at nighttime, that change is gonna be pretty negative. Um, the question is how we could deal with using a little bit less light. And so actually, a lot of the light that we have in the cities doesn't really help us see, especially when it's glaring. Um, and when we apply extra light, we know that it doesn't really make people be able to see better, it doesn't make them feel safer. Uh, I have a lot of different projects here. What I'm shifting to now being at the gift set is looking more with satellite uh, measurements and photographs from the International Space Station. How are cities changing? And also just trying to understand, because this data is fairly new, trying to understand the properties of light emission upwards from cities so that we know what to do with this kind of data. At, since, since I've started working in this field, then I, I am more, uh, I do pay more attention to my light exposure. And for example, also if I'm, if I'm traveling or something, or if I want to promote it, then I've learned some, some tricks to try and help. So, so being outside in the morning is really helpful if you want to shift yourself to wake up earlier. So for example, if I need to read a paper, um, then I can try and do that, go for a walk outside at the institute or sit outside somewhere with this paper in the early part of the morning in order to get a lot of light exposure. So I think one of the most important things that I do is just showing people photographs uh, of places before and after an installation change or just examples of really good lighting or examples of really bad lighting because it makes it really easy to understand then what we're talking about and it's not about removing all the lights from an area, but rather about using light efficiently. So one of the questions that I'm really interested in is how is the brightness of the night sky changing over time? And the problem with trying to answer that as a researcher is that I'm only at one place and I can only measure a few places how they're changing. 
So we need data from over the entire world. And the best way to do that is through citizen science. So regular people go outside and do measurements about how bright the sky is and then report back to us. So there's a number of different projects that are running. One is called Globe at Night. It's been going since 2006, and it's based on constellations, looking at constellations and seeing how many stars you can see. And we developed an app called Loss of the Night that gets people to look at individual stars and say whether they can see them or not. So the most important thing to do is make sure that you don't shine a light off of your property or up into the sky. So just try and make sure that you keep it in your region, not shining into your neighbor's bedroom, and that it's directed downward so it goes where the light's needed. Those are the, the sort of the two key things for reducing the environmental impact of the lights.